Welcome. Good morning, family of overcomers. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to New Hope Community Fellowship. I am Pastor Lee Bynum, and I believe that there's a word today from the Lord. And overcomers, we're here because God is creating overcomers for victorious living. And I believe this, this Sunday morning, I believe on this third Sunday in the new year that you are one of them. Our vision is to developing disciples for kingdom of deployment. But maybe you're not a disciple yet. And I first want you to become an overcomer so that you can be deployed. We greet you today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad you tuned in. I'm so glad that you chose to click me on your computer, on your phone, your iPad, because there's a word for you today in this new season. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, I thank you for your word today. I even thank you for the opportunity to grow in your word. I pray that somebody's life will be changed and somebody's soul is saved. And that you give us clarity today as we ascend to new heights, new dimensions, new levels, new places and spaces, and new purposes. And we know that it's already done in Jesus' name. Amen. Pick me up this morning at Psalms 24. Psalms 24, very familiar passage of scripture. Psalms 24. That reads this way. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. The world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. Overcomers, let's go to work. There's a word today that I want to share. As I ascend, I have clarity. As I ascend, I have clarity. One of the most essential things for every believer is to really understand in life is to never lose sight of who you are and whose you are. It's important to have an awareness of how God has created purpose for your life, but also to have awareness of God and all his majesty and all of his authority and power in your life. And once you are clear about 
these two particular areas, whatever occurs in your life, you'll, you'll easily be able to navigate because you'll sense that nothing in your life just happens without God being in control. Clarity is the key as we ascend. Clarity is the key as we climb in our careers. It's the key uh, that when we ascend in every area of our lives, when you consider all the things that God is doing in your life and all the things that God is going to do in your life, this will be your season to thrive, your season to prosper. You must know that God puts demands on you and I to make certain that we have clarity concerning every dimension that he has taken us to right now. We know that last year in 2020, God revealed so much to us and we saw things and wow, we are seeing things now like we've never thought we would see already in 2021. Uh, this particular teaching today, I want to coincide with the elevation that God is going to take you on as you are elevating your career, elevating your pursuit towards him, that you are clear about the assignment that God wants you to undertake. Clear about what God is doing in your life. Clear about where God is taking you. You never lose sight of the main things. You've got to be clear. And so this Psalms is a psalm of ownership. It's a psalm to put things in perspective to remind us that no matter what happens, no matter what dimensions, no matter what occurs in our lives, it's God who is in control. It's God who orders our steps. It is God who navigates us through different seasons of our lives. Make no mistake about it. After all you've been through, you've got to thrive. There's revelation. And I want you to get this from this psalm this morning, that where the psalmist lifts this up to us about the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and everything that dwells therein. We have to understand and we have to appropriate, it, appropriate the perspective of God. We have to have that, an appropriate perspective of God. And there are many views and opinions about God in the earth, but when you are a child of God, you got to be clear on who God is. All throughout scriptures, we see the importance of revelation. And revelation being something being pulled off or revealed to us or exposed to us, we otherwise would not have known. But let me tell you something. There's a difference between knowing about God and knowing God for yourself. Uh, this is the difference between information and revelation. I can read information in a book, but revelations was something ex exposed to me that I never could have received from a book. And there's so many ways to come to know God. Revelation is progressive. You just don't get it all at one time. Mm. But God is out in a different season in our lives. Because I think there are three ways that you can come to know God. First of all, you can come to know God through parental exposure. Think about it for a moment. You were born in a house. Uh, you had no control over it. And so consequently, you came to know God based on your relationship your parents had or didn't have with God. So your early uh, relationship and formation of Christianity was rooted in your parents' expression of God. Whatever they expose you to, whether they took you to church or didn't go to church, uh, that's how you get to evolve. That's why the Bible says to train up a child in the way it should go. Hmm. Secondly, not only do you learn about God, get to know God by parental exposure, but you get to know God through the practice of eschatology. Don't trip off the word, get the meaning. It's a big word for church or community. How we come into the church and how we allow ourselves to be uh, indoctrinated by a certain denomination constructs or how we experience church. And sometimes the downside of that is that we often become more denominational than we do Bible. Ah, meaning we become more Methodist and, and more Baptist and more Pentecostal than we are Bible. Mm. That's why Jesus uh, comes to deliver us from religion to a relationship. 
But we do come to know God through our eschatology, through our experiences in the church because church was created to be a community. Let me say that again. Church was created to be a community by which we come to know God. Thirdly, there's the practice of eschatology, parental exposure. Thirdly, you have personal experience. This is one thing to be, to be taught, okay, uh, about God through other people, but it's uh, another thing to have your own set of experiences and you get to know God for yourself. When you go through enough experiences in your life, then you become, they, they become personal to you. You know uh, what God can do. There was a time that I heard that God could heal. But when I got sick, I knew he was a healer for myself. There was a time that I heard that God could open doors, and, and when that door was closed in my life, it became an experience that was real to me. That's what I discovered for myself. When you begin to know who God is, then you begin to rejoice. That God is, what is God? God is a creator. He is the creator. The psalmist is clear in, this, in the Bible. It confirms that God is creator. Now that's significant, my brothers and sisters, because what it says is that nothing exists without God's knowledge. Though it, 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 it will not catch him off God. He didn't catch God by surprise. He's creator. Genesis 1 reveals in the beginning was God. Mm. But please understand something. The beginning did not begin. Ah. <laughs> God began the beginning, which meant that God existed ah, before the beginning, and God would exist when the end occurred. God is in eternity, so he pre-exists uh, uh, the beginning because he made the beginning, and he will be in there when the end comes. Let me say it another way. In the beginning, before the, he was in the beginning before the beginning ever began to be. He who was outside of time stepped into time and had no constraints from time. In other words, the point is he's creator. As a matter of fact, Psalms 100 verse 3 says that it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of his pastor. John 1 declares in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And everything that was made was made by him. So as I elevate, so as I uh, need to go up, uh, you need to have clarity about God's creative power. Why? Because the things you're going to need in your life as you go and as you ascend to different dimensions, you're going to have to remember that God is a creator and he still creates today. Now, what does that look like today? Think about it this way. God's creative powers is revealed in three things. Mm. God steps out on nothing and makes something, number one. Think about it. When you are sitting and looking at your resources and wondering about what you don't have, you ought to stop worrying about what you don't have. Are you serious? God, who can step out into nothing, who can make something happen because God can work with nothing to produce something, number one. Secondly, everything he creates has purpose. Mm. Everything he creates with a purpose. Everything God never wastes anything. He doesn't waste anointing. He doesn't waste you being here. Everything that happens in your life was created with a purpose. You have a purpose in your life. I speak that thing over your life right now. That God started, whatever God started, he will perform until the day of Jesus Christ. The only reason you experience what your experience is, the devil, I said it, the devil is trying to kill your purpose. Mm, you thought the devil was trying to kill you, no. The devil doesn't want you. The devil wants your purpose that you have for God. I declare no weapon formed against you shall prosper and there is a purpose on your life and God always always provides for his creation number three he always provides for his creation he created one thing on one day and created the next thing the next day and the thing on the next day supported the thing on the day before meaning God was systematic in creation First day creation stuff 
supported second day creation stuff. <laughs> second day creation stuff supported third day creation stuff. And by the time you get to day six, man has stuff to eat, man has stuff to, 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 to drink because God created man and he created man's provisions before he created man. Whatever God does in your life, God always provides provision. And he provides it before the manifestation even takes place. You, you missed it. You missed it. Do you not know that if you're nervous and you're wondering how a thing is going to happen in your life, how it's going to work out, how it's going to turn out, and, and remember what Matthew 6.26 said. When, when, when it speaks in reference of, of it looks, it said, look at the birds of the air. They don't soar, nor do they weep or gather the barn. But yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more than these? Don't you know if God takes care of the litters of the fields and the birds of the air, don't you think God can take care of you? He's creator. But wait a minute. He's also in control. <laughs> the psalmist says, uh, he gives us clarity that God is in control. I need to say that, that God is in control. With all of the stuff that's happening in the world today, please remember that God is in control. He's creator and he's owner. And whatever happens in the earth does not diminish the fact that God is still on the throne. We're coming by knowing that God has ownership. Mm. He has ownership. God never births anything that he does not take care of. It all belongs to God. I am confident by the reality that as I ascend, everything I have belongs to God. It's God's house. It's God's money. It's God's car. Everything I have, it belongs to God. And not only does he also, it, it, he has ownership, but he maintains the order. Mm. When God is in control, he brings order. Wherever there is chaos, let me talk to somebody right there behind that bed, Don. Because you feel like you're in a space and place of chaos this morning. And you're like, Lord, what am I going to do? <laughs> let me tell you. God can bring order. And I want to declare that God is about to bring things in order over your family, bring things in order over your job, bring things in order over your mind. Remember, remember, child of God. Why? Because God determines the outcome. Mm. God is the one who determines the outcome. He, he knows our beginning from the end. Ooh, huh. mm. That's why I give him glory because I, I don't care how this story may look in the middle. I already know the outcome is determined. When I read the word, I know in the end we win. Uh, I have got to believe that no matter what I am in the process, God is the one who determines my outcome. That's why you must authentically pursue God. Mm, because what's so important now for all of us is to understand the sincerity and authenticity that is needed as we pursue God in this season. There's a generation of people now who are hungry for God like they've never been hungry for God before. When you think about what you've gone through, I mean over the last 10 or 11 months, you got to admit, if, if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, you wouldn't even know where you are. But the psalmist declared that there are certain requirements, but you must pursue authentically and you must be intentional in it because you must have character over carnality. Now, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who have not lifted up their souls to an idol, God is looking for people who are not caught up in the desire to, to promote their flesh. Anytime you let carnality in, anytime you let carnality take precedence over your life, you compromise the promises of God. And carnality is never about God, it's 
about you. There are areas that we have to check ourselves if we're going to please God. He says there are three areas that will confirm our character that pleases God. Number one, the hands. Number two, the heart. Number three, the hubris. Let's listen. Number one, the hands. Lord, check my hands and make sure that whatever you put in my hands, my hands are clean. Make sure that these hands are not doing dirt. Make sure that these hands are pure. Make sure that I don't have blood on my hand. Make sure that what comes from these hands brings glory and honor back to you. When I lift my hand, there is no contradiction, number one. Number two, my heart. I want to be pure in heart. I want to perish with, with hyssop and wash me white in the snow. And so creating me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. Lord, I want my heart to be right. And Lord, deliver my spirit of hubris. Mm, that's it, number three, hubris, hubris. Don't let pride come in. Because whatever pride, whenever pride comes in, we know what arrogance looks like. We know what narcissism looks like. We, we, we need to be humble. And if you're humble in due time, God will exalt you. Why, Pastor? Glad you asked. Because God rewards righteousness. Listen, listen. When things are in order in your life, when you do right before God, God will always reward you. Mm. Psalms 84, 11 says, No good thing would he withhold from them who walk upright. As you are sin, you got to be willing to separate yourself from every lie of the enemy. Listen, listen. Whatever you are experiencing already in this year, a true and authentic experience like you've never had before, playtime is over. Playing around with folks that aren't talking about anything, not going anywhere. That doesn't mean you any good. You don't have time to connect with stuff that doesn't produce fruit. Hear me, somebody. Mm. When I was a child, I thought like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Listen, listen. Tricks are for kids. Ah. Mm. And I'm ready and willing to go to the next level. And I see clearly now that ever before, and I sin, and as I have to make sure that I have an appropriate Posture for God. Ah, the psalmist shares this powerful revelation. Listen, listen. But as we climb, as we ascend, that, that, that is this generation that, that sees God's face. They're, they're not at the titles. They're not at the position. They're not at the, at the, at the accolades. They, they, they are after his face. Woo! I just want your face. I just want your presence. I want to see your will manifest in the earth. And as a consequence, look at what happens in that posture. Verse 7 says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. Our posture is important because in the earth. Ah. <laughs> see, it's important because it's in the earth. It speaks to what we know. Ah. You look like what you know. You missed it. You look like what you know. Can I? <laughs> well, I can tell what you know by how you look. <laughs> because whatever you know will always show. Ah, you missed it. I'm going too fast. Whatever you know will always show. So here's the revelation. No matter what, keep your head up. Ah, I need to declare it over life. No, no matter what, I'm keeping my head up. Because as you go through life, it's important to realize as you ascend, as you climb, as you elevate God, it's not just about you. Because what you need to learn now is your witness, your word, your witness matters. Ah. In the Old Testament, the people of God had an understanding of God that God was up. You missed that. They, they thought that God was up. Up. Now, that's the transcendent uh, understanding of God. Remember? 
Moses goes up to get the Ten Commandments. Elijah fights uh, uh, the prophets of Baal up on Mount Carmel. Abraham offers his son up on the mountain. Why? Because they understood that God was up there. Ah, I will look to the hills from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. I, I will look up. Look up and keep your head up. Lift your head up, O ye gate, because our posture suggests that our confidence is not in what's happening around us, but our confidence is what's happening above us. You missed it. I'm going too fast. It's not about what's happening around you. It's about what's happening above you. I, I want you to get this. Please get this. The enemy works hard to keep your head down. Woe is me. Poe me. Mm. Because if your head is down, it means you're focused on the things around you. And you're weighed down by the circumstances and situation that are around you. But I've come to tell somebody today, keep your head up. <laughs> keep your head to the sky. I come to tell you no matter what you're going through, no matter what's bothering you, no matter what's got you down, keep your head up. Did you know that an airplane always flies with its nose slightly up? Even when it levels off at 30,000 feet in the air, it, it's, it, still, it, it, it still got a slightly pitch on it. Mm. Because the attitude of the plane determines the altitude. Woo. God, I thank you. And when you discover it's on its way to its destination, see, sometimes the plane might run into turbulence. Sometimes the plane will run into storms. Sometimes the plane gets into choppy weather. But the pilot knows that my nose is great, God Almighty. My nose is already up. Mm -mm. And so he starts elevating. He starts ascending through the cloud. And sometimes it can be very valid and turbulent. But there is a place above the clouds where the sun is shining. I'm talking about the issue here. So keep your head up, turbulent, because there's a place where the sun, the air flowing, is shining. Mm. I'm going to keep my head up because my attitude determines my altitude. Because if I open up, he'll come in. <laughs> Woo! The correct posture before God is when you open up and lift up your head. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, and the King of glory shall come in. You want the presence of God, mm. but you don't want to open up. Ah, oh, you missed that. You want his presence, but you don't want to open up to receive his presence. In the sixth chapter of Isaiah, when Isaiah saw God high and lifted up, and he said, I saw his train, and it filled the whole temple. But it was after Asa died. That he said, I saw and I had an experience. And when I saw his glory, mm, it wanted to fill the whole house. It wanted to fill the whole temple. God wants to come into your home. God wants to come into your career. God wants to come into your job. God wants to come into your family. Mm, God wants to come into your situation. See, the king of glory wants to come in. And when he comes in, that's when you acknowledge <laughs> the power of God. God. See, beloved, worship is tied to who God is. Remember, I started out by telling you today that you've got to know who you are, but you've got to know who God is. And when you understand that, then you navigate in these different spaces because you know what you have available, and what you have available is in God. See, worship was declared. Lord, if you don't do what I want you to do, I'll still give you glory. <laughs> if you don't do what I want you to do, I'll still give you the praise. If you don't do what I want you to do, I'll still give you honor and glory. I will still worship and adore you. I'll worship you and adore you in good times. I'll give you glory in bad times. I'll give you glory in up times, down time, in time, out time. I'll give you glory no matter what. That's why you got to thank God. And you need to thank God because he's a strong God. Woo! Strong and mighty. Strong in battle. Who is this king? <laughs> the Lord strong and mighty. When I was weak, 
and didn't, didn't know how I was going to make it, God was my strength. See, see sometimes, sometimes, you have to pause mm. and thank God for certain things. You got to thank God for the battles he's won. When I look back over my life and I see the battles that I overcame, somebody's looking at me this morning. You came through cancer. You came through the battle of cancer. You came through the battle of lupus. You came through the battle of a job. You came through the battle of COVID-19. So see, you got to look back and thank God for the battles he's won. But then you got to thank God for the breakthroughs you got. Somebody watching me this morning. God opened doors for you. God made a way out of no way for you. God brought you through. God brought you up and God brought you out. And God has blessed you. So you got to thank God for the breakthroughs that you got. Thirdly, you got to thank God for the blessings you received. Because everything you got, you don't deserve. Woo! But you ought to be saying, Lord, I give you glory because you bless me with stuff. You bless me with money. You bless me with stuff that money can't buy. <laughs> Ooh, you bless me in my right mind. You got blood running warm in my veins. You bless me to have a heart that's not hard. You bless me to get beyond the pain and trauma of my past. <laughs> oh, so I can give him glory. And I can give him glory because he's Savior. I can give him glory because he's Lord, and I can give him glory because he's king. Ah. Let me leave you with this. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear what this reveals to us. Because it reveals something powerful, beloved. God, I thank you. That God is Savior. It's the idea that comes from the theological word, soteriology. Don't trip out the word. It's the idea that if God is Savior, somebody needs to be rescued. Somebody needs to be saved. But I will never receive him until I acknowledge that I can't save myself. Mm. Or oh, I give him glory. <laughs> that he saved me. But I give him glory not for just being Savior. I give him glory for being Lord. Mm. Lord is another dimension. He saved me. But Lord means that God is now over me. He controls and governs my life. <laughs> if, he, if he can't be Lord over all, he won't be Lord at all. You missed that up, won't you, fast? <laughs> if he can't be Lord over all, he won't be Lord at all. <laughs> not only is he Savior, not only is he Lord, he's also King. Woo! Oh, I want to thank you for being King. Who is this King of glory? <laughs> king represents his sovereignty, his sovereign rule. King represents his authority. That he can do whatever he wants to do, whatever he wants to do it. <laughs> My daddy used to play checkers. And when daddy was playing back in his day, they called it checks. And I remember him one time playing another man, and the man back in that day, what the young folk called daddy, he was talking smack to daddy. And when daddy made a move, the man jumped daddy with his check and took daddy's check. Daddy moved again, hmm. man took another check. Well, before the, you know it, the man almost had all of my daddy's checks. And somebody this morning, God, I thank you. That's how it feels to you. That's what this message has dropped on you. That's what this message has found you. That's what this message has it, hit you. Mm. Feel like mm. every time you try to sin to heal, 
every step you take, the devil takes your check. He takes it. So the man was playing daddy. He started really talking smack because he was almost all over. <laughs> Glory to God. God, I thank you for your word. But he made a wrong move. <laughs> Somebody sees it. Somebody right now, you feel it. Somebody right now under the sound of my voice, you down to your last move. You down to your last this. You down to your last that. <clears throat> but the man made a wrong move. And daddy took his check and said, You ought to have enough experiences in your own life that you've seen him heal, that you've seen him deliver, that you've seen him revive, that you've seen him pick you up and turn you around and place your feet on solid ground. Mm. Glory to God. If that's you this morning, hallelujah. The Bible says you confess with your mouth. Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The Bible says, Thou shalt be saved. If that's your prayer this morning, if you pray that with me, I want you to, I want you to email me at Pastor at New Hope. CF.org. Pastor at New Hope. CF.org. Mm. Oh. As I sin, I have clarity. God's got something in store for you, beloved. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. The king is not dead. <laughs> the king is still on the throne. Mm. Faith, hope, much love, beloved. God bless you. See you again next week. <laughs>